in terms of what, what might come next. So before we discuss, the, the very last thing I'm going to do is discuss what could happen next, and I'm, I hope we'll leave you with, with some talking points, things to, things to ponder as you go away. What could we do next? I'm going to show you some, some examples of, of what, what these were used for apart from the great video. So we'll go look at some incidents. So this is a couple of years ago already, the America's Cup World Series in Plymouth. And uh, let me show you a video. Okay, so I'll, set, I'll explain what's about to happen before I, before I let it run. So this was Fleet Race, of course, uh, coming up to the Windward Gate. That was New Zealand. That's Coots on one of the Oracle boats. He's just jived, as you can see, but New Zealand jived right on top of him. So he's sitting there bad air, and he's going to decide, instead of following him around, he's going to jive again and take that leeward, uh, the left side gate. Uh, so he's going to have two jibes in a row. He's going to be going slowly. Here comes Spiddle, screaming in. He jived a long time ago, so he's coming in fast. And he's going to decide that he can make it inside of Coots before uh, the zone. Now keep in mind, they can't actually see these yellow lines. We, we like to joke about that. When you go out in the water, those lines will disappear. It's like, what a shame. <laughs> it would be so useful. <laughs> so he can't see this. He has to make a judgment. And even though you can see those yellow lines in real time, it's quite hard to see what's actually happening. So I'm going to let it play and you can see for yourself. Taking the lead. Yeah, it was a great move. You know, the way they can turn inside. It looks like Coots may jive back to the other. Off down here. All two Oracle boats in New Zealand. Only one to survive so far. So the three big guns are up there in front and Dean Barker at the moment for Team New Zealand is doing well but it may be that on the far side Oracle Race Team Spittle, Oracle Race Spittle and Oracle Racing Coots could have taken the lead that there's a penalty been imposed. So they decided he, that Coots got to the three bowling zone before Spittle made the overlap. So how do they decide that? You might think they're watching videos like this but they're not at all actually. They're looking only at the data coming off this box. And uh, what, what they're doing, the, what it looks like, is they're sitting inside a, a booth like this, just looking at a computer screen, looking at the data coming off this box. So they're doing stuff that's accessible to, to, to anyone, really, if you, if you have the data feed. You don't have to have a helicopter out there with the, the $100,000 system. And what, what the data looks like is just position, velocity, and heading. So this, this is how it's represented. So this is something that's... A, comes from the same live line system that supports the, the TV pictures, but it's, it's, it's just giving you positions. It's got the positions of the marks. Uh, it's got the velocity. What they do is they read, the black line shows, based on the velocity, where the boat would be in five seconds' time. So that's what the black line is. And then the umpires sitting in the booth can play it, just, just like I'm going to do now. And then they can, they can watch. And so, they, so after a protest has been, has been lodged, they will go and look at this and make a decision. So they see this kind of thing. So you can see there's Coots jiving right now. And Spiel's on the inside. And he goes round and there's, there's protest. So what happened right at the zone? So I've frozen it right there. And I've put these dimensions on to help you. So you can see there. So this is what they're looking at. And they can freeze it like that. Uh, so those are AC45 boats, 45 feet, 13.7 meters. So I've showed you what does what 13.7 meters look like. On that, three boat lengths, 41 meters there. And you can clearly see that Coots has entered the three boat length zone and Spiel has, has not, by about a boat length. And you can see that's very clear, right? You all nodding? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now suppose all those positions were off by a meter. It would still be very clear. So this particular thing... This particular call at that moment, you could have made that with cell phone GPS on those boats. And you might say, well, that's a case where it looked so clear. It wasn't that clear. You had Spiddle, one of the best sailors in the world, thought he could make it. Uh, and, you know, he went for it. But it's, it's very clear that he couldn't have made it there. So by, by having a system like this, even if it were off by plus or minus a meter, you could have made an easy call there. Okay, so that was an easy call. So now I went and looked, for, okay, what's the, what was the closest call in the last two months or two years? Okay, I don't know, anyone want to, do you remember? We have the answer. I, I think it was this one. Uh, race 13 of the final, uh, at, at this stage, Oracle was down 8-4, so it was match point, of course, to New Zealand, and, they, and New Zealand had just almost taken the cut, where they, they'd been miles ahead in the, in the race 13 that was abandoned because of the, 
uh, because of the time limit. And this was similar conditions. And they were ahead, as you see. There's New Zealand ahead on port. Oracle is just jive. So maybe when you look back on it, this was where the cup was won and lost. And it's all is about to be a port starboard incident here. So so when you look, when you rewind, you go back, you go, wow, this was a this was a big deal. It seemed like a big deal at the time, but now we know what happened afterwards. This was a really big deal. So so what did that what did this look like? <coughs> so uh, just let me set up some of the so the detail, as you can see, Oracle is just jive, so they are now accelerating. So they're 23.8 knots, they're slower, and they're behind, so 72 foot boat is 22 meters. So they, they, they are more than a boat left behind at the moment, but they're accelerating out of the jive, so they're getting closer. And so let's play the video. Oracle has the right away way on starboard as it comes together. Starboard! 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 Oh, Jesus! Fuck, sight! Go close! I don't have the sound, but you might remember it was Starboard, so Spiel was yelling, he was yelling some stuff like Starboard, and then he was yelling some stuff that I'm glad you're not going to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and it was pretty close, and, and there's the protest right there. Now, so this was, and, and the, the, the umpires took a long time to decide this, I don't know if you remember that, but it took a long time, and they did penalize New Zealand. So how did, how did they decide this? Well, let's, let's look at some photographs of it from the very same angle. This is the moment that Spoonhill turns the helm. Uh, you can just, you can see the, the air, you can see on the rudder that's just begun to turn, you see this uh, port side rudder throwing up some splash, and the boat has not yet responded. Just turned the helm here, you can see this guy who is about to have his, his whole world moved underneath him at about 30 miles per hour. He's still standing up straight, he's about to almost fall off. I think he's the guy who, who kind of came out of this the best, that he didn't fall off. So, so Spirit Hill has just decided to make an avoiding maneuver at this stage, and there the boat's responding. You see that guy almost loses his balance. And so there's, there's the event that the, that the judges have to look at. And they have to decide on the, on the leftmost picture if he had carried on going straight. Was that a collision course not? So now remember, they don't get the video. They just have the booth. So these two images are from the judges' booth. The left one is just before he turned, the right one is just after he turned. Those numbers are very small, you can't read, but, but I, I've looked at them and <laughs> that one says heading is 100 and here heading is 101. He's just beginning to, to turn and speed on the left here is 26.5 knots and it's 26.4. So he's just begun to turn and slow down. So now the, the judges can't look at this one anymore. At this stage, the starboard boat has begun to take avoiding action and the question is, if he hadn't, was it a collision? So if you look on the left, you can think about it, it looks pretty close, right? So what you can do and what they can do, you can say, well, let's advance the boats down the track they were following a boat length, see if it makes any clearer. So there's Oracle, there's New Zealand. It still looks pretty close, and you can see the distance from the port hull to the stern. That green looks like he might have missed. But it turns out, because these boats have such high closing uh, speeds on a port starboard situation like this, the committee decided, uh, the, the, the judges decided in advance, if it's, if it's so close that it's hard to call, then the giveaway boat is, has the onus to keep clear no matter what. And that's actually what happens in everyday sailing. Uh, if, if it's so close that you might have risked your boat or your crew, then the, the giveaway boat has to keep out the way, and that's it. So even though this was the hardest to call uh, situation of the whole event, if you moved everything a meter, it, it becomes hard to see, but it was hard to see anyway. So the point is, again, you make the same decision if you're using consumer level G GPS systems on a boat like it. If it's that close that you can't tell from a meter, then you call it. So here's two cases from the America's Cup that, that really say you, you could have used, you didn't have to have such fancy GPS for these two situations. So does that mean we can say, well, oh, let's put these on our boat? Well, not yet. Let's talk about it a little bit more.